ado, I want to introduce Austin Kirpius, one of our excellent engineers here at Batobi. He's going to give us a closer look at the signaling process in WebRTC and explore the most common approaches to signaling as well as the less conventional approaches so that we can better understand how it works and what role it plays in establishing WebRTC connections with other peers. Cool. So today I'm going to talk to you about signaling in WebRTC. If you're familiar with WebRTC, then you've probably at least heard of signaling, but maybe you don't know exactly how it works. Um, so this is the perfect talk for you. Um, before I get started, uh, also I did uh, a previous talk on WebRTC. It's on Toby's YouTube channel. It's worth checking out if you're not at all familiar with WebRTC. It kind of runs you through the basics of things. So what is signaling? Um, Connecting between two devices uh, in WebRTC requires a signaling intermediate to share information about connection between the peers in the session, right? So the information we need uh, includes the SDP offer, SDP answer, and ICE candidates. So um, that probably doesn't mean a whole lot to you, but I'm gonna go through it in a little bit more detail here. So we'll start off with SDP offers and answers. So um, SDP, um, or Session Description Protocol, as the name would suggest, describes information about the session. So um, that information might include the name of the session, what codec should be used for audio and video, um, when the, or sorry, who started the session and when, lots of other metadata. Um, the SDP is split up into two parts, the offer and the answer. The local peer creates an SDP offer and sends it to the remote peer the remote peer creates an SDP answer if it agrees to answer the call and then sends it back to the local peer. This is kind of the basics of the, the SDP handshake. So now it's time to talk about ICE candidates. So what do ICE candidates look like? I've given you some examples here for reference. I, I'm kidding. Um, so ICE is short for Interactive Connectivity Establishment. ICE candidates are identified by the browser when a uh, RTC peer connection is instantiated. So the ICE layer chooses which peer is controlling the session. This is called the controlling peer. So that's typically who creates the call, but it's not necessarily guaranteed. That's just what I've seen. <clears throat> um, on the other end is the controlled peer. So the controlled peer will receive multiple ICE candidates from the ICE layer and send them to the controlling peer. The controlling peer is then responsible for choosing a paired candidate, so essentially a matching candidate, to send back to the controlled peer. And this is how they figure out how to reach each other as directly as possible through the internet. So this is essentially how they figure out what part, of, or sorry, what address they need to talk to over what ports and what protocols. Uh, next up, we'll talk about signaling options um, or transport options for signaling. So the, the cool thing about SDPs and ICE, all of this stuff is just plain text. So any, any transport method that can transport plain text will work for this negotiation process. Um, so web or sorry, HTTP is um, a really common one. Um, so like HTTP pulling as well as web sockets. I would say web sockets is probably the most common method. Um, and then also things like MQTT um, or more specifically MQTT over web sockets is another option. You could even use carrier pigeons if you wanted. I mean, literally anything that supports text, although that might be a little bit of a pain. Um, I even considered making a demo that used iMessage for the transport layer just to kind of demonstrate things. But for the sake of simplicity, I, I, I chose a different demo. So um, I'm going to run through that demo real quick now. And essentially, um, what this will do is create a two-way video call between two browser instances. And um, we'll print out all of the SDP handshake information and the ICE candidate information so that you can kind of see what that actually looks like. So I'll hit next over here, next over here, providing a name on each, hit start. And we can see that each one has a local and remote peer. So it's for me, it's the same camera, obviously, but this could work between two different computers on you know, two different parts of the world. Um, but you can see that we first off send um, an SDP offer, which is quite large. Um, there's a lot of data in that payload. And then we send off a ICE candidate and another ICE candidate. There could be any number of ICE candidates depending on how many potential ways there are to reach the other client. Um, and then you can see on the other end, we send back an SDP answer. And you can see that we finalize with sending the, the paired ICE candidate, which is kind of telling the other end, here's how you can talk to me now, um, now that we've established how we can talk to them. So at a high level, that's what signaling involves and kind of how it works.
that's the end of my presentation. That was beautiful. Thank you, Austin. Uh, does anyone have any questions for Austin? What is this used for? <laughs> I, I get how it works, but what what do you what do you what do you do it use it for? So, like WebRTC or specifically the signaling? Signaling, yeah. So, that, like the goal of WebRTC is to create a peer to peer connection between two endpoints on the internet. So, mm -hmm. to do that, you need some sort of intermediate to actually mm -hmm. figure out how these two endpoints are going to talk to each other. So, initially, you talk to a server. They decide how these two pieces are going to communicate, what protocols they're going to use what address they're going to talk to and all that other stuff. Um, and sometimes you need um, like a relay server involved because you can't create a direct connection. But generally speaking, you do. But all of that negotiation has to be handled by a third party that's outside of the browser and outside of your network. Yeah. Okay, so this is not like a feature of WebRT. This is like an underlying how RTC works essentially. Yeah, that's how you, that's how you establish a connection. If you wanted to, to in fact, in my first video, I did a single page RTC app that um, all in one creates a um, both the peer connections and sends the video to itself. So in that case, you don't even need a signaling server. You save the the the, um, the SDP to a variable, and then you pass it to the other peer connection on the same page. So you don't necessarily need signaling to fundamentally use WebRTC, but if you want to talk to someone on the other side of the world with WebRTC, then you you need signaling. 